Good morning, third grade. Today will be our last YouTube video because next Monday is Memorial Day and so we won't be having a lesson on next Monday. We will still, however, be meeting this Wednesday for our Zoom lesson. So just wanted to put that out there. I hope you guys have been enjoying the YouTube videos. Um, you're going to see that we're only going to get through the next two chapters of Because of When Dixie. I would love to finish the story with you all. So I left some instructions at the end of this video. Um, make sure that you watch until the end and then leave me a comment letting me know whether or not you would like to continue reading the story. Um, we're going to go ahead and jump into our vocabulary and then the story and then the assignment at the end. Please do not forget to hand in your assignments. You can send them to me by way of text message or class dojo or email. I do want to say thank you to everyone who participated in our spirit week last week. You guys did an amazing job. I posted all of our collages in class dojo for you all to have. And especially thank you to those who participated in our fun Friday. We had a blast doing the scavenger hunt. I hope you guys enjoyed yourselves as well. Um, again, this is going to be our last YouTube video, but we will see you on Wednesday for our Zoom lesson. Okay, let's go ahead and jump into um, this week's lesson. All right, you guys, I'll talk to you soon. Take care. Okay, let's go ahead and jump into our vocabulary for this week. First word is manufactured. You'll see that ed suffix, which means in the past. Manufactured means to make something using machines, or it could mean to invent. Aaron's company manufactured the water bottles that we sold to raise money for field day. Lozenge, you're going to hear this word a lot in this next chapter that we're going to read. Lozenge, a small candy-like item usually taken for a sore throat. It may remind you of a cough drop. Caden ate a lozenge and his throat started feeling much better. Peculiar, that's a tricky word to say. It means strange, odd, unusual, or special. Eli noticed a peculiar smell coming from the kitchen. Melancholy. Melancholy means a feeling of sadness usually with no obvious reason or cause. Almost like you're just feeling down or sad for no reason, or you can't really figure out the reason. Isaiah's cat, Samson, felt a little melancholy. So Isaiah got him a companion, another cat named Delilah, hoping that would make him feel better. And last word is idle. Idle is a homophone, which means there are more than one spelling, more than one meaning, but they have the same pronunciation. So the idol that we're talking about today is I-D-L-E. It means without a purpose or pointless. Please do not waste valuable time in idle chatter. Only discuss the important parts of the story. Okay, so that's going to be our vocabulary words that we're going to hear in the story this week. So now you should be able to figure out what these words mean as I read them in the story. Let's go ahead and get started with Because of When Dixie, chapters 17 and 18. Chapter 17. Well, Litmus came home from the war, said Miss Franny as she went on with her story, and found himself alone. And he sat down on what used to be the front step of his house. And he cried and cried. He cried just like a baby. He missed his mama and he missed his daddy. And he missed his sisters. And he missed the boy he used to be. When he finally finished crying, he had the strangest sensation. He felt like he wanted something sweet. He wanted a piece of candy. He hadn't had a piece of candy in years, and it was right then that he made a decision. Yes, ma'am, Litmus W. Block 
figured the world was a sorry affair and that it had enough ugly things in it. And what he was going to do was concentrate on putting something sweet in it. He got up and started walking. He walked all the way to Florida. And the whole time he was walking, he was planning. Planning what? I asked. Why? Planning the candy factory. Did he build it? I asked. Of course he did. It's still standing out on Fairville Road. That old building, said Amanda. That big spooky one? It is not spooky, said Miss Franny. It was the birthplace of the family fortune. It was there that my great-grandfather manufactured the litmus lozenge, a candy that was famous the world over. I've never heard of it, said Amanda. Me neither, I said. Well, said Miss Franny, they aren't made anymore. The world, it seems, lost its appetite for litmus lozenges. But I still happen to have a few. She opened the top drawer of her desk. It was full of candy. She opened the drawer below that. It was full of candy too. Miss Franny Block's whole desk was full of candy. Would you care for a litmus lozenge? She asked Amanda and me. Yes, please, said Amanda. Sure, I said. Can Winn-Dixie have one too? I have never known a dog that cared for hard candy, said Miss Franny, but he is welcome to try one. Miss Franny gave Amanda one litmus lozenge and me two. I unwrapped one and held it out to Winn-Dixie. He sat up and sniffed it and wagged his tail and took the candy from between my fingers real gentle. He tried to chew on it, and when that didn't work, he just swallowed the whole thing in one big gulp. Then he wagged his tail at me and lay back down. I ate my litmus lozenge slow. It tasted good. It tasted like root beer and strawberry and something else I didn't have a name for. Something that made me feel kind of sad. I looked over at Amanda. She was sucking on her candy and thinking hard. Do you like it? Miss Franny asked me. Yes, ma'am, I told her. What about you, Amanda? Do you like the litmus lozenge? Yes, ma'am, she said, but it makes me think of things I feel sad about. I wonder what in the world Amanda Wilkinson had to feel sad about. She wasn't new to town. She had a mama and a daddy. I had seen her with them in church. There is a secret ingredient in there, Miss Franny said. I know it, I told her. I can taste it. What is it? Sorrow, Miss Franny said. Not everybody can taste it. Children, especially, seem to have a hard time knowing it's there. I taste it, I said. Me too, said Amanda. Well then, Miss Franny said, you've probably both had your share of sadness. I had to move away from Watley and leave all my friends, I said. That is one sadness I have had. And Dunlap and Stevie Dewberry are always picking on me. That's another sadness. And the biggest one, my biggest sadness, is that my mama left me when I was still small and I can hardly remember her. I keep hoping I'll get to meet her and tell her some stories. It makes me miss Carson, said Amanda. She sounded like she was going to cry. I have to go. And she got up and almost ran out of the Herman W. Block Memorial Library. Who's Carson? I asked Miss Franny. She shook her head. Sorrow, she said. It is a sorrow-filled world. But how do you put that in a piece of candy? I asked her. How do you get that taste in there? That's the secret, she said. That's why Litmus made a fortune. He manufactured a piece of candy that tasted sweet and sad at the same time. Can I have a piece to take to my friend Gloria Dump? And another one to take to Otis down at Gertrude's Pets? And one for the preacher? And one for Sweetie Pie too? You may have as many as you want, said Miss Franny. So I stuffed my pockets full of litmus lozenges. And I thanked Miss Franny for her story. And I checked out Gone with the Wind, which was a very big book. And I told Wind Dixie to get up. And the two of us left and went over to Gloria Dumps. 
I rode right past the Dewberry's house. Dunlap and Stevie were playing football in the front yard, and I was just getting ready to stick my tongue out at them. But then I thought about what Miss Franny said. And I thought about what Gloria Dump said about not judging them too hard. And so I just waved instead. They stood and stared at me. But when I was almost all the way past, I saw Dunlap put his hand up in the air and wave back. Hey, he hollered. Hey, Opal. I waved harder and I thought about Amanda Wilkinson and how it was neat that she liked a good story the same as I did. And I wondered again, who was Carson? When we got to Gloria Dumps, I told her I had two surprises for her and asked which one did she want first, the small one or the big one? The small one, said Gloria. I handed her the litmus lozenge and she moved it around in her hands, feeling it. Candy, she said. Yes, ma'am, I told her. It's called a litmus lozenge. Oh, Lord, yes, I remember these candies. My daddy used to eat them. She unwrapped the litmus lozenge and put it in her mouth and nodded her head. Do you like it? I asked her. Mm hmm. She nodded her head slowly. It tastes sweet, but it also tastes like people leaving. You mean sad? I asked her. Does it taste like sorrow to you? That's right, she said. It tastes sorrowful, but sweet. Now, what's surprise number two? A book, I said. A book? Uh-huh, I said. I'm going to read it out loud to you. It's called Gone with the Wind. Miss Franny says it's a great book. It's about the Civil War. Do you know all about the Civil War? I have heard it mentioned a time or two, said Gloria, nodding her head and sucking on her litmus lozenge. It's going to take us a long time to read this book, I told her. There are 1,037 pages. Whoa, said Gloria. She leaned back in her chair and crossed her hands on her stomach. We best get started then. And so I read the first chapter of Gone with the Wind out loud to Gloria Dump. I read it loud enough to keep her ghosts away. And Gloria listened to it good. And when I was done, she said it was the best surprise she had ever had. And she couldn't wait to hear chapter two. That night, I gave the preacher his litmus lozenge right before he kissed me goodnight. What's this? He said. It's some candy that Miss Franny's great grandfather invented. It's called a litmus lozenge. The preacher unwrapped it and put it in his mouth. And after a minute, he started rubbing his nose and nodding his head. Do you like it? I asked him. It has a peculiar flavor. Root beer? I said. Something else. Strawberry? That too. But there's still something else. It's odd. I could see the preacher getting further and further away. He was hunching up his shoulders and lowering his chin and getting ready to pull his head inside his shell. It almost tastes a little melancholy, he said. Melancholy? What's that? Sad, said the preacher. He rubbed his nose some more. It makes me think of your mother. When Dixie sniffed at the candy wrapper in the preacher's hand, it tastes sad, he said and sighed. It must be a bad batch. No, I told him. I sat up in bed. That's the way it's supposed to taste. Litmus came back from the war and his whole family was dead. His daddy died fighting and his mama and his sisters died from a disease and the Yankees burned his house down. And Litmus was sad, very sad. And what he wanted more than anything in the whole world was something sweet. So he built a candy factory and made Litmus lozenges. And he put all the sad he was feeling into the candy. My goodness, said the preacher. When Dixie snuffed the candy wrapper out of the preacher's hand and started chewing on it. Give me that, I said to Win Dixie, but he wouldn't give it up. I had to reach inside his mouth and pull it out. You can't eat candy wrappers, I told him. The preacher cleared his throat. I thought he was going to say something important. Maybe tell me another thing that he remembered about my mama. But what he said was, 
Opal, I had a talk with Mrs. Dewberry the other day. She said that Stevie says that you called him a bald-headed baby. It's true, I said. I did, but he calls Gloria Dump a witch all the time, and he calls Otis retarded. And once he even said that his mama said I shouldn't spend all my time with old ladies. That's what he said. I think you should apologize, said the preacher. Me? I said. Yes, he said. You. You tell Stevie you're sorry if you said anything that hurt his feelings. I'm sure he just wants to be your friend. I don't think so, I told him. I don't think he wants to be my friend. Some people have a strange way of going about making friends, he said. You apologize. <sighs> yes, sir, I said. Then I remembered Carson. Daddy, I said, do you know anything about Amanda Wilkinson? What kind of thing? Do you know something about her and somebody named Carson? Carson was her brother. He drowned last year. <gasps> He's dead? Yes, said the preacher. His family is still suffering a great deal. How old was he? Five, said the preacher. He was only five years old. Daddy, I said, how could you not tell me about something like that? Other people's tragedies should not be the subject of idle conversation. There was no reason for me to tell you. It's just that I needed to know, I said, because it helps explain Amanda. No wonder she's so pinch-faced. What's that? said the preacher. Nothing, I said. Good night, India Opal, the preacher said. He leaned over and kissed me, and I smelled the root beer and the strawberry and the sadness all mixed together on his breath. He patted Winn-Dixie on the head and got up and turned off the light and closed the door. I didn't go to sleep right away. I lay there and thought how life was like a litmus lozenge, how the sweet and the sad were all mixed up together, and how hard it was to separate them out. It was confusing. Daddy, I shouted. After a minute, he opened the door and raised his eyebrows at me. What was that word you said? The word that meant sad? Melancholy, he said. Melancholy, I repeated. I liked the way it sounded, like there was music hidden somewhere inside it. Good night now, the preacher said. Good night, I told him back. I got up out of bed and unwrapped a litmus lozenge and sucked on it hard and thought about my mama leaving me. That was a melancholy feeling. And then I thought about Amanda and Carson and that made me feel melancholy too. Poor Amanda and poor Carson. He was the same age as Sweetie Pie, but he would never get to have his sixth birthday party. All right, you guys, that concludes our story for this week. Now, this is the last YouTube lesson that I will be uploading. And I know that we did not get a chance to finish because of Win dixie If you guys would like for me to record the rest of the story, I think there may be about another six or seven chapters. What I can do is maybe upload two or three chapters each week until the book is done. I know a lot of you are anxious to find out how the story ends. What happens to Opal? Does she find her mom? What happens with Win dixie Does the preacher ever change his ways? So I know we're looking forward to finding out what happens to all of these characters that we have gotten attached to the last um, several months. And so if you would like for me to do that, just leave me a comment below this video and let me know if that's something that you're interested in. And I have no problem with completing the story so that you all can find out what happens to these characters. Okay, we're going to go ahead and talk about what our assignment is for these two chapters. Today, we're going to be talking about conclusion or working on conclusion. A conclusion is like a judgment or a decision that you reach by reasoning. So you're going to think about everything that has happened in these chapters and some of you may get this confused with a prediction. We're not predicting what's going to happen next. We are coming up with a sound decision as to why Opal was doing some of the things that she was doing in these two chapters. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and show you our chart that we're going to use. 
Once again, you don't have this chart in front of you unless your parents can screenshot it and print it out for you, but you can just write this on a notebook paper and that's fine. Clue number one, clue number two, clue number three, and then we finally have the conclusion I came to was blank. Okay, so don't forget that your reasoning or your decision has to be based on facts or data that you find in the story, not anything that you're going to make up off the top of your head, okay? So I want you to think of three things that Opal did in these two chapters, okay? Three things that Opal did in these two chapters and then you are going to use those three clues to come up with a conclusion, to come up with a judgment or a decision based on the facts of your clues, okay? I think that Opal did blank because blank, okay? So you can use this chart or you can just write it down on your notebook paper. You are listing three clues and then those clues that's going to lead to your conclusion. Again, if you ever have any questions or concerns, please reach out to me via text, email, or class dojo, and I will be more than happy to answer them for you. All right, you guys, get started on your work, and I will talk to you soon. Bye-bye.